So this is the old Wilkinson homestead in the city of Gosnells and um, it's on the state register of heritage places and looked after by the city of Gosnells and just over here we've got the parking bays for disabled people and you can see the city of Gosnells has this is the entrance, right over the entrance here. I'm not advocating that there's the car park, that these trees all be cut down and replaced with jacarandas, but it's a little bit difficult to see the difference between these trees and those trees. Well, I guess they're not on a footpath, these ones, but this is disabled parking. And this is parking for a council-administered facility. And um, if there was to be any consistency in the city of Gosnell's management of native vegetation, unfortunately, these trees would have to go. And I, I think what it demonstrates is that firstly, trees do drop branches, everybody knows that. I've got my car parked under a branch there. I'm not panicking about it. I'm not ringing up the council and saying, cut the trees down. I think we should plant more trees. But what it does demonstrate is the Parliamentary Select Committee, I think it was in 2007, recommended that local governments be required through state government to develop proper policies for urban ve native vegetation. And um, that recommendation hasn't gone anywhere. And my experience is that local government's not sure what to do about it. They don't have clear policies on it, and they definitely need them. The one thing that's come out of Richard's campaign so far, besides the public support and media attention on the issue, is that council decided, at his prompting, to not replace Australian vegetation with introduced vegetation, like a jacaranda tree, but to, if they are to be replaced, and that's still open for debate, it seems the trees aren't unsafe, but if they were to be replaced, that they would be replaced by native vegetation. Now that is the beginnings of a very sound native vegetation policy for the city of Gosnells that could serve as a positive example for other local government in areas in Western Australia in keeping with that parliamentary, I think it was a parliamentary select committee recommendation in 2007. Anyone who thinks it's Australian to replace Australian vegetation with non-Australian vegetation that quite often requires more maintenance, water, fertilisers, all that sort of thing. Not always, but quite often. But anyone who thinks that's an acceptable Aussie sort of thing to do, well, I guess they're reflecting some genetic cultural heritage that's based in another country other than this one. And when you look at the additional benefits of, say, a tall eucalyptus tree to a even a mature jacaranda tree in terms of habitat for the native animals that we all say we love, 
food for the native animals and birds that we all say we love, for re-establishing the cultural, environmental integrity of our country, fixing carbon and producing oxygen, it doesn't matter which way you look at that original preference of council, perhaps prompted by a minority of less than informed residents, that original intention of replacing mature Australian trees with non-Australian trees, it's difficult to understand in retrospect and it's certainly very difficult to continue to justify in any local government area in Western Australia at all.